Why are illegal drugs flooding the streets of the United States, drive down any American city, any major metropolitan area? And you're likely to see the same scenario playing out just like here on the streets of Philadelphia. This is North Philly and Kensington Avenue in Philadelphia. Uh, could be a massive drug cartel operations that are operating right inside illegal immigrant shelters in the United States. Yesterday, a Colombian drug lord was arrested operating a massive drug ring out of an illegal immigrant shelter in Texas. So this is happening right in our backyard, right under our noses. So was this an isolated incident? Or is something tells me no, probably not an isolated incident. Joining us for some context on this, this is 20 year, 27 year veteran of the Border Patrol and author of the best selling book called Invaded, which is a must read book. Um, if you want to understand what's happening at our borders from someone who has worked the border for 27 years, JJ Carroll, uh, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate uh, the time you give me on some to, a topic that is essential to the safety of our republic. Well, I appreciate it. And, you know, few people have as much depth of knowledge on this as you do. So we really appreciate you helping us navigate this. So we see this story about this Colombian drug lord arrested in Texas at a shelter running this illegal drug operation out of the migrant shelter. Was this an isolated incident? So we all sit back and breathe easier or is this happening all over the United States? This is happening all over the United States. So we're looking at, you're looking at every single illegal alien detention facility, be it one of the, the large 2,000, 3,000 uh, bed spaces down on the Texas, California border, Arizona border, or we're talking about all whole hotels up and down the East Coast seaboard are packed with illegal aliens. And this goes back to a vetting issue. So the first question I'm sure your audience is asking, how in the hell does a drug lord, a terrorist, rapist, murders, how do they get into America if they are vetted as Biden and Mayorkas states? And the truth is, Clayton, no one is vetted. So let me explain how the vetting process works. So you're an individual. Let's say you're a higher level Colombian drug lord like this gentleman is that got into a Texas uh, facility and runs his operation out of there. If that man has never been in the United States of America and I run him through our database, he will never pop up, meaning he will come back negative, meaning clean, because he's never been in the United States, so he could never commit a crime in America. So when we vet someone, we're vetting them against our FBI national crime database. We're not vetting them from a Colombian database. If this individual was on our top 10, our top thousand, hell, let's just say, top 10,000 of the most wanted people in, in the world, if he's not on our database in FBI and on one of those top 10,000 people, he just comes through our border and is vetted clean. Well, it's mind blowing to me because in the day that I was reading about this individual, that he was on some sort of top 10 most wanted list. So it, then if that's the case, and I don't know if that reporting is accurate or inaccurate, but if he, if he was wanted by America's, one of America's most wanted, how is he operating in the United States? How does he get on that list in the first place if he's not committing a crime in the United States? Are we watching him elsewhere? Were we watching him in Colombia and we just let him waltz right across the open border into the United States, into this shelter and operate? Well, that's a great question, because what we're seeing is we have foreign nationals. We call them TCOs in law enforcement speak, transnational criminal organizations. OK, so these TCOs are being monitored outside of America, see what they're doing, drug lords, etc. And you ask a very good question. Well, if that man was on a on a top thousand list or these terrorists that we find out later, we we're like, oh, my God, we released a terrorist into America. Let me explain or give you a, a picture of what a processing area looks like in the Border Patrol. So it's not orderly. Like, here comes a gentleman. I'm going to type in his biographical data. We're going to interview him. It's going to be an hour, two hours. I'll do another three hours of paperwork, and then I'll send him on his way. It's not like that. I want you to think of being at a Wendy's, right, a Wendy's restaurant. You have five or six people running the, the back store, and then you have – area of that holds about 50 to 60 people per capacity loss. Now imagine that is the Border Patrol station. You and your five guys are processing. Instead of 60 people, you have 700 people in a space that holds 60. You have another thousand or 2,000 five miles away on the border that are waiting to be transported into your facility. 
So when that drug lord comes to me, I'm typing as fast as I can. I look at the screen, the screen, the databases are so bogged down because at the same time I'm checking that guy, thousands of people are being run through the same system across the border. So it just bogs down. I've been there. It's a useless, the system is inadequate. It's, it's, it's bungled. It's a boondoggle. So I release these people. And then you see later DHS comes back. We finally caught the illegal alien terrorist after four days manhunt. We found them. But this is going, this is not an anomaly. That's the point I'm trying to make. This is not an anomaly. This is happening thousands. Listen, thousand times a day. This is happening to America. The vast majority of everyone crossing the border, single adult military age men, we have no background checks on them and we're releasing them into America. And you're right about these hotels. Saw footage overnight from the Roosevelt Hotel in New York City. Yes. Um, you just uh, undercover footage of these you know, hundreds of military age men. There's no women. There's no children. All just sitting there waiting, being processed, going to be released into the United States. Can you talk about the drug operations? I'm sure you obviously were watching this unfold right before your eyes. What kind of a, are we talking about a sophisticated operation here? Yes, this you need to look at. I know that we watch movies and we think the, the drug cartels are boogeymen. And I mean, they're vicious, violent, almost subhuman. However, the upper echelon of them, they run their business like an Amazon business. They have a product that they have to move through the border. Just narcotics. We're not talking about kids and, and uh, human smuggling. We're talking about just narcotics. Right now, as you and I speak, 80% of the United States border and the southern border is completely unmanned. The checkpoints that are north, on they're supposed to be like the secondary, think of uh, safeties and linebackers in football. They're our secondary force of defense. They're closed. So right now, as you and I speak, tons, thousands, millions of tons of hard narcotics, fentanyl, cocaine, heroin, are pouring through the border because there's no one stopping it. You can take a direct line to the open border and to Joe Biden. We are now at... Trump's last year, he was at 50,000 overdose deaths with about 70, 80% of them tied to fentanyl. Fast forward to three years, we're now on the average of 150,000 overdose deaths a year. You talked about Philadelphia and Kensington. I wrote in my book, Invaded, the great investigative journalist, Sarah Carter, went down there and did an interview with the, narco, the, the police narcotics sheriff in Philly. And he said, 100% of all of our drugs in Philadelphia are coming straight from the border. That's over 2,000 miles away, Clayton. Mexico to Philadelphia is over 2,000 miles, and it is devastating our communities with fentanyl and now the new drug, Trank, that has fentanyl in it. And Americans, leaders, Mayorkas, Biden, et cetera, are doing nothing to stop it. There is, it is not one proactive law enforcement policy being enforced today. Not one. It is absolutely infuriating. I mean, it makes sense. I'm sure you you know devoted your life to it. It makes yes. my my skin absolutely crawl to see what's happening to these cities, to see what's happening uh, across the United States. And as the Department of Homeland Security says, quote, that these illegals coming into the United States they undergo robust security vetting. Quote, robust That's security vetting. That's a lie. That's a lie. It's an absolute lie. There is no vetting. They're they're bringing in over a million people through the CBP one app. That's the same thing as my iPhone, Clayton. I just put take a picture and I give him some BS biographical data, and then he wait, then I walk through the ports of entry. I just go. No one's vetting anyone. Okay, let me give you an example. This is a modern day example. Haiti. Haiti's falling. It's a fallen nation. Okay. Thanks to We're us. We're expecting. Thanks to us. It's fallen. We're looking at probably a half a million to a million Haitians coming in the next few months. Okay, months. I'm a Border Patrol agent down in Florida. I get a flotilla of 50, 100, 150. Let's just say 100 people are in my station. And I'm processing a guy that has tattoos all over his face, neck and arms. I know from law enforcement time, me, JJ Carroll, that guy is a savage killer. I know he is. I feel it in my bones. He is. He tells me his name is Joe Smith. Right. I know as a Border Patrol agent, that guy's a savage killer. I have 100 more people. I have flotillas of thousands more coming in. And my supervisor's telling me, get him out, meaning process him. He's clean. 
meaning I've, I've, I've robustly vetted him against the FBI database. He comes back clean. I release him. I release a killing savage into America. This is, ha again, I'm going to repeat myself, and I, this is not an anomaly. This is, this is exactly what is happening in America every day by the thousands, Clayton, by the thousands. It's hard to wrap your brain around it, but it, we're averaging anywhere from seven to 15,000 illegal aliens coming in our border every day, release, arrested and released. I'm telling you, the vast majority of single adult military age men with criminal histories that we don't know anything about, and we're releasing them into our society. We have millions of hardcore TCO criminal members in America. Not even talking about the terrorists and everyone else. I'm just talking about hardcore criminals. Um, over the past few days, we've seen this back and forth between the Supreme Court and the t and the Texas uh, and Texas um, over their enforcement of their own laws, and the Supreme Court going back and forth, back and forth on this. And I think every time I check, it's it's moved again. I'm our team yes. is monitoring it every every few hours. It's like the Supreme Court says they won't they won't interfere with Texas, and now they're saying well, we, we they are going to interfere with Texas. Anyway, can you give us an update on where you see that going? Where do you see Texas being able to maybe enforce its own laws, be, be able to pull the National Guard in here, and be able to arrest individuals and send them back? I'm going to say my, my professional gut feeling is because I have no faith in Abbott. Abbott does everything just halfway. And let me give you an example. He shares, Texas shares 1,250 miles of the border with Mexico, the largest area, right? He secured 47 acres in Shelby Park. Not 47 miles, 47 acres, okay? All of my Border Patrol brothers tell me, JJ, what do you think they're doing? They're walking around. They're just walking around the 47 acres. It's a lie, it's theater. Now, I give him credit that he wants to arrest. I wanna see that. But why are you securing 47 acres instead of 1,250 miles? And then right now, Mexico President Orbedron came back today and said, I'm not taking one back. You cannot push back anybody. If that's the case, then Abbott, I'm going to see what he does, and he won't. He'll fold. What Abbott should do is say, okay, I'm shutting down all traffic, commercial and human trafficking, not trafficking, but humans coming across. I'm shutting down everything. Mexico, all of our trade agreements and everything is shut down. Texas does not need Mexico. Mexico needs Texas. Mexico needs America. Trump showed that. He told, he told the president of Mexico, you're going to stand up your border patrol. Yes, Mexican national government has a border patrol, and they're not racist, just us. I want you to shut it down. Shut down the caravans or I'm taking all your money away. And in one day, less than 24 hours, that president bent the knee to President Trump and did it. I want to see what Abbott does. Because what are you going to do? If you're going to arrest them, you're going to have to charge them. Are you going to deport them or are you going to charge them under a federal statute and put them in jail? I want to see it before I believe anything that Abbott does. Abbott is always half-assed about everything he does on the border because he's a politician. He's a rhino. That's how I feel. This is just my opinion, not yours. I think he's a rhino. So I'm curious to see how this is. Yeah. Well, he also, but I don't trust it. He's a card carrying member of the World Economic Forum as well. Yes. You can go to the WEF's website to and read everything you want to read about him. Well, JJ, thank you so much for this context. Uh, we'll be watching this once again. The Biden administration is lying straight to our faces. Robust security vetting while we have Colombian drug lords and other drug lords at illegal immigrant centers all over the United States. We've got to stop this. JJ, thank you so much. I encourage our audience to go. If you haven't already picked up JJ's book, it's an amazing book. Um, it's a best-selling book on Amazon called Invaded. Go and buy it. Support JJ. Support this cause. And let's keep it as a number one book on Amazon. Uh, JJ, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Clayton. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.